Uh, morning, we're going to go live uh, a little bit late with morning prayer this morning. Um, it's a day on which Christina Rossetti is remembered and I was kind of having a look through some of her poems and, and what I realised was that so many of them about death, that they're really inspirational poems, but probably not for this morning. So what I'm going to read in a wee bit is What is Pink, uh, which is a children's poem written by Christina Rossetti. But before we do that, we open our our hearts and our minds uh, we uh, lay bare our spirits and we come before God this morning O oh Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise in your resurrection O Christ let heaven and earth rejoice hallelujah Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast. Not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Say together Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among the people. For great is the Lord and great to be praised, for he is more feared than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are but idols. It is the Lord who has made heaven. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord your fam you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord all honour due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful and all that is in them. Let the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. With righteousness he will judge the world and the peoples with history. Lord God, you draw us by your beauty and you transform us by your holiness. Let our worship echo all creation's praise and declare the glory of all the nations through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First readings from Exodus 19. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt on the very day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. They journeyed from Rephidim, entered into the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. Lord called from him, to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites. Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be treasured, my treasured possession for out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a nation. So those are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came and summoned the elders of the people and he set before them these words and the Lord commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord 
And the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud in order that the people may hear when I speak with you and so trust you forever. When Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord and the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day, the Lord will come down the Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall let, set limits for the people all around, saying, be careful, do not go up the mountain or touch the edge of it. Any who touch the mountain shall be put to death. No hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows, whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a long blast, they may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He consecrated the people and then he washed their clothes and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the morning of the third day, there was a thunder and lightning as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and the blast of a trumpet sound so that all the people who were there camped and trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood there on the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to go to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. And then the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look, otherwise many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, the people are not permitted to come up Mount Sinai. You've warned us yourself, saying, set limits on the mountain and keep it holy. And the Lord said to them, go down and bring up with you. Go down and come up, bring Aaron with you. But do not let either the priests or the people break through or come up the come up to the Lord, otherwise he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Um, not even going to try and work that one out. Um, slightly confusing bit of scripture there. It's like God said, set the limits. Don't come near the mountain. Prepare yourselves. Wash. Uh, don't um, go near a woman. I don't think that makes a woman particularly bad, but it's saying to the the men in that community particularly, don't, don't go out and um, consecrate yourself as holy do what you're told to do and be ready to meet with God and that's okay that's fine but what confuses me then is this whole kind of aspect of um you know you're coming up the mountain don't let the people break through because that's going to be really bad for them but Moses is actually standing there saying to God but you've already told us to set out a perimeter and we've done that so who knows anyway interesting bit of scripture go and read it again Exodus 19 The second scripture is from Luke 1, 1 to 25. Since many have undertaken to set out an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled amongst us, just as they were handed on to us by those from the beginning, who were eyewitnesses and servants of the world, word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the days of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah, and he belonged to the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both getting on in years. Once when he was serving as a priest before God, his section was on duty. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter into the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. Now at that time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there were, appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife... Elizabeth uh, will have a child. A 
he will she will bear a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness and many uh and many will rejoice at his birth. He will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he must never drink strong wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and he will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the Spirit and the power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the obedient to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready the people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you good news. But now because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in all their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered about his delay in the sanctuary. And when he did not come out, he could not speak with them. And they realised he'd seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When this time of service was ended, he went to the home. After those days, his, his wife Elizabeth conceived and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favourably on me and took away the disgrace I've endured amongst my people. And these are the words that Zechariah spoke as he came out of uh, that time of silence. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia, alleluia. Um, I know that's a, a child because otherwise my phone wouldn't get broken through in a ring. Um, I know that's Martha calling for help with her homework. But we're going to pray um, before I go back. fairly insistent just reflecting on that that reading uh, that line in Luke uh, which says parents go and be with your children <laughs> and um, I'm thinking of that let's just pray Lord Jesus, who will we bless this day? Because we have enabled them to come into the presence of God. Who will we gather at the feet of Jesus for healing and comfort? Who are those who are going through the ordeals of life? All knowing God, would you pour on those children that we think of, those people who we know are in need, all that they need for survival, renewal and restoration. Then, dear God, as you are blessed, as you bless the saints of old, spread out 
in the plains in humble faith and waiting to be taught to come to us, your disciples of today. Remind us of the possibilities that you see in us too. Speak to each one of us in the depth of our souls and tell us what you have seen to bless there. Speak to us that we might be lifted up in hope and take up the task of your saints in the world for this day. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Lord, those prayers, but also uh, the things that are on our heart, we ask that you would hear and, and um, you know, take into your presence remind us that there is no perimeter now, there's no uh, fence between us and your holy mountain. Remember, that, remind us that there is no sanctuary through which we have to pass, no holy of holies, but we can come into your presence daily uh, to be renewed in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. Lord Jesus, you are the risen Christ. You are our almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples in the sight of the risen Lord. Give to us knowledge of Jesus' presence with us, that we might be strengthened and sustained by his risen life. And serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the holy, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joy of eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I best go. Take care, have a good day.